Hi, I'm Annie Botticelli, and this is the Storyteller Forecast for Pisces for December 2015. You can check out my new blog on my website, AnnieHelpsYou.com, where I'll be writing about astrology and all kinds of other topics. So check it out. So what's going on in December for Pisces? Well, in general, let's talk about the general forecast, and then we'll drill down for things specific for your sign. I am really excited that we have all clear for holiday shopping because Mercury is not in a retrograde phase for most of the shopping season. So for all of December until around December 19th, 20th, you've got the all clear for shopping. This doesn't happen every year. And in fact, we had years in a row where the Mercury retrograde cycle was happening during the shopping season. And when that happens, it makes it harder to find the things you want. It makes it harder to find things that other people want. And it makes it more likely that people will return things or there will be problems with the purchases. So when Mercury is direct like this, then you've got the all clear for festive holiday shopping and you have universal support. Of course, that is except for you last minute shoppers because the Mercury shadow period will start and probably get kind of intense pretty quick once you get around December 20th or so. So if you're doing last minute stuff, you're gonna get wrapped up in that. So here's your incentive to uh, get it going before then. Okay, so there's some beautiful dates for parties or for just magical connections with people. Holiday time tends to be a time when a lot of people get together. On December 1st and December 8th, there's some beautiful aspects with Uranus, with um, first Mercury and then the Sun. And then on December 17th, there's a beautiful aspect with Venus and Pluto. Now the particular aspect with Venus and Pluto is one that requires a little bit of work on your part. The trines, which are the ones on December 1st and December 8th, are aspects that'll just be awesome regardless of whether you do anything about it. They're kind of easy. But when you have something called a sextile, it's a 60 degree angle, then you activate that particular type of transit with a little bit of work or with some effort. So things involving transformation, which is Pluto, and Venus, which is love, beauty, and money, aesthetics, you may have an opportunity there, but you've got to do something with it. So look out for that around, the, uh, around that time, December 17th or so. Whenever I give you dates, remember that sometimes the transits don't happen, ex sometimes the energetic manifestations don't happen on the day of the actual transit. So you've got to leave a little room around those days for the possibilities of the energetic combinations. So then we've got another sweet spot at the end of the month, and this is kind of a nice way to leave off, which is the sun in Capricorn making this beautiful aspect to Neptune. So at that time, really trust your intuition because a hunch or a dream or something could put you in the right place at the right time or lead you along a magical path that if you ignored that hunch, you wouldn't have activated. Again, that's a sextile. So when you have a 60 degree angle, you've got to do something with it. So it's not enough just to have the energy come in. You've got to take an active role with it. So we've got a lot of sweetness in this month. We've got an overall festive mood for most of the month um, with a couple of spots to watch out for, which I'm going to fill in those details here in a second. But the mood does change, and this is typical in December, because Sag energy, when the planets are in Sag, the sun is in Sag, Mercury's in Sag, it's very festive, it's, it's friendly, it's you know happening, it's just very vibrant. And then as it starts to move into Capricorn, and we get to the winter solstice, um, or for people down under, it's the um, spring solstice, or, or I mean the summer solstice. Um, either way, it's a, it's a power day. And the energy is still moving inward. When the energy goes into Capricorn, regardless of what hemisphere you're in, the energy moves internal when the sun moves into Capricorn. And that happens at the end of the month. So it's like festive, 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 busy, and then internal and quiet. Specifically on Christmas day, there's a loaded full moon. This is a very tricky full moon because there's some beautiful aspects with it, but there's one opposing force, which is Pluto. And you know if you're going to get into an opposition with any of the planets, Pluto is going to be the one that will be most notable because it's the most powerful of all of them. So 
that will bring a power struggle. So you've got this full moon in Cancer, which brings fullness, completion, you know, family stuff, which is perfect, perfectly fitting for that period of time, whatever holiday you celebrate at that time. And then you've got an opposing Pluto. So it's very likely the power struggles are going to come up. But then we also have a trine to Neptune, which makes it magical and ethereal and uh, creative. You know, you might have some quiet time over the holidays for creative genius to come through. And there's a couple of different aspects about that. Um, Mercury is trining Jupiter, and that can bring in some really great expanded ideas. And then any nice aspect to Neptune is going to bring in artistic, an artistic, like a poetic quality to the energy. The way that I'm seeing this trine um, to Neptune, uh, the full moon trying to Neptune and the full moon opposing Pluto all happening at once. It's kind of like there's a drama that comes up, but then the Neptune trine brings a harmonious resolution and possibly, hopefully, could be better off than before. It's kind of like something's been brewing. In the way that I'm seeing this, it's going to, it's going to most typically manifest, you know, is a lot of times people see family members at the holiday time that they don't usually see you know so they don't have whatever that antagonistic dynamic is in their face all the time but the universe not coincidentally i'm sure is bringing up at this time a chance to look at things and get things right out on the table you know everything's going to well up and be right out there to be dealt with so then you got this neptune thing that it's like then you can kiss and make up and have a nice time for the rest of the time and get in some good creative um, quiet time as well. There's one other date to watch out for, uh, and that's around December 10th. Now this is close to the new moon. The new moon is in Sagittarius, 19 degrees on December 11th, and that's a really sweet time. That's new openings, new windows, new doors, um, flying open in all things Sag, so publishing, writing, There'll be a lot of this energy of Sag this month because the sun is in Sag and there are aspects with the sun. But the new moon kind of embodies this energy of newness within Sag realms. So writing, publishing, long distance travel, things involving different countries or cultures, things involving religion or philosophy or a church or an education um, topic, teaching, learning, those kind of things. There's new energy and vibrant energy in those arenas. But right before the new moon on December 10th, which like I said before, you don't always feel these, whatever they are, good, bad, challenges, whatever, on the exact day. So if this can brew for a few days before, but it's going to coincide with this new moon. So on December 10th, Mars in Libra opposes Uranus and Aries. Oh, and th these three, Mars, Uranus, or Pluto, whenever you get those together in any configuration that's challenging, they can get a little bit nasty. You know, we don't really know what that's going to look like. So I always say when Mars is involved with Uranus in something like this, an opposition, guard your personal body more than, you know, just be really alert when you're driving, when you're walking. You know, don't egg anyone on who's just waiting to explode. You know, be careful of what's above you when you're walking. You know, just be really aware of your physical body because Mars is how you use your energy and it also rules Aries, and Aries rules aspects of your physical body, it's your physicality. So Uranus brings in these surprises, like an electric you know, jolt. And at bare minimum, a lot of people are going to be really nervous, 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 just feeling like you have your fingers stuck in an electric socket for several days or longer. You know, it's just a very nervous energy, and you need to ground it. You know, I like to ground it by putting my bare feet and hands in the earth, but I live in a warm place where I can do that all year round. And I understand that you might live in a place where you can't really put your bare feet in the earth in December. So in that case, you can put your hand and your third eye on a tree. You know, this sounds um, like a hippie thing to do, and maybe it is, that's fine. But this is actually a scientific thing to do because the energy of the tree very closely roots into the energy of the earth and the vibration of the earth, which is measurable with scientific instruments, can change your actual vibration. So if you are putting your skin, your, your um, being in close contact with your skin into something of a different vibration, you can clear your own vibration and it can ground your energy. So you can try some kind of method that way um, on that time. And you'll notice that you're gonna be nervous, you know, and you're gonna feel like, oh my God, what's wrong with me, you know? And maybe you won't be able to sleep. And it's probably this transit. So something specific for Pisces 
The sun and Mercury are moving into your 10th house and the 10th house is all about career and work and life purpose and recognition. So there's a good chance that you're going to be recognized for something that you do for your work. Maybe you'll get a raise, maybe you'll get a bonus, maybe you'll get, um, you know, if you're an artist, maybe you'll have an awesome uh, show or something like that. Just recognition, acknowledgement, visibility comes to whatever you're pouring your heart into or whatever you're putting your work into. Um, and it could be your career, or it could be something along the side of your career. And Mercury is there too, so it's giving it more power. You middle degree placements, some of you, will also experience um, part of the month with the Sun and Mercury in the 10th house. So early and middle, very strong focus on career, work, life, purpose. For the rest of you middle degree placements and late degree placements, this energy is coming for you. So you might feel it brewing, but it might take a little bit longer to manifest. For you all, that energy is still in the ninth house. So some of the middle degree and late degree placements, your Sun and Mercury are still in the ninth house. And the ninth house has to do with Sagittarius, which we were talking about before with that new moon. You know, so things involving teaching and learning. Um, the way this could manifest could be something quite superficial, like you just go on a book bender. You know, you go to the library, you go to the bookstore, and you come back with all these books. Whenever the energy of Sagittarius is accentuated, people feel a little bit all over the place, you know, because that's how Sag energy is. It goes in an upward spiral. And Pisces is familiar with that because you go in a downward, inward spiral. So you're used to spiraling, but it's down and in as opposed to out and up. So there's something similar about it, but there's something different. So you might find that you become just interested for this burst in reading or, you know, learning or um, studying things. And that would be super fun. It's really good use of the energy. So there's also for all Pisces, a continuing ongoing long-term theme and short-term theme for December with a focus on relationships and merging your power with other people's power and getting assistance or funding from other places. So the seventh and the eighth houses have to do with relationships and you early and middle degree placements have Jupiter this expander, this bringer of growth and opportunity in the seventh house, which is going to be wonderful for your relationships, wonderful for your client relationships. Um, it can expand everything that it touches. So if you're trying to build a business, if you're trying to grow your business, if you're trying to have more personal contacts, just for whatever reason, if you're trying to improve your relationships, if you have a romantic one, or you want to get into a relationship, this transit can bring in a person of significance. I call them POCs, people of consequence. You know, so whenever I see Jupiter go into a seventh house, I think, wow, the odds for that person to have a really cool relationship come into their lives, or more than one on different levels, is really increased. You know, astrology is all about probabilities. You know, when you go into the psychic arenas, then you can um, try to say maybe what will happen or what won't happen. From a scientific standpoint, when we look at probabilities, we could say that there's a good chance that something's going to happen, you know, but that doesn't mean it's going to happen, but it increases the chances significantly. So if you're working on that, working on things with your relationships, you have strong long-term energy there. Plus you've got, for the short term, Venus and Mars, either in your seventh or eighth house, which are both partnership houses. So you can see this short term focus with the Venus and Mars, this long term focus with Jupiter. You later degree placements will have Venus and Mars, and all of you will have the North Node in these partnership houses in December, but you still have Jupiter in your sixth house. So it's gonna take a little bit before this powerful long term theme really gets kicking for you with your relationships. Um, so it will be staggered a little bit into next year, um, but it's coming and you might feel it already. You know, a sensitive person can feel these things before they actually get there. So in summary, you've got career stuff, you've got teaching, learning, studying, you've got um, relationship focus, and then we have the general transits that I talked about first. So. I hope that you have a wonderful end of your year. I hope that this has been a great year for you. I hope that you are getting ready to make your intentions for the new year, even though I don't exactly resonate with January 1st as a new year because um, it's such a quiet time. You know, I resonate with the spring equinox as being the new year, but there is still something fun about having a new chance, a new clean slate 
starting January 1st. So use the quiet time in December to get your thoughts together about the things that you want to create in the next year. If you want any assistance with that, you can check out my website, AnnieHelpsYou.com. Definitely check out my new blog about astrology and all kinds of other things. And I hope you have a wonderful month and the rest of the year. Bye.